That's the key. People say all the time, Chris, I don't have the willpower. Willpower will run out. You'll run out of willpower. The key is building habits that you don't ever forget. You know, how many of you got up this morning and, and took a shower? How many of you washed your left arm first? How many no idea what arm you washed first? <laughs> so when you start thinking about this tomorrow, you're going to go, yeah, I took a shower, and I'm, I'm, I wash the same arm every time. How many of you got up this morning and put your right shoe on first? How many have no idea what shoe went on first? But you look down and you see two shoes. 80% of what we do every day is habitual. We don't even think about it. These are habits. So when you get up in the morning, you start doing one step, and I'll kind of throw this back at the end today. It's like, I'm not going to overwhelm you. I'm going to help you do one thing at a time and build that habit, and that will lead to another and over. That's the key. When you ask a better question, the thing I'm always trying to help my kids, be curious. The more curious you have, the better answer you'll get, because in the question lies the answer. If you've never seen this t-shirt before, if you talk, start with one medication, medications lead to another. Medications can be absolutely essential for people, but most medications are lifestyle medications and they don't help you fix the problem. Okay? I'm not anybody's doctor in here. I'm not asking anybody to get off their medications. I want to make that crystal clear. I'm here to educate you in asking better questions. So the key is you have to ask better questions. So if you looked at a tip, typical medicine cabinet, this is what you see. Blood pressure, high, uh, uh, sleep problems, cholesterol, heart disease, inflammation, whatever it might be, these are lifestyle medications. So you start asking better questions. So I'll ask a question to you. If you have a headache, do you have an ibuprofen deficiency? <laughs> Some of you are still sharp. I know it's afternoon. I still get it. It's a joke. No, of course we don't have a ibuprofen deficiency, but the first thing people do when they have a headache, they reach for ibuprofen or inflammation. In reality, they might be dehydrated, they might be lacking sleep, essential fats, whatever it might be, but it's not ibuprofen. So you ask the better question. So I love telling this story. I was in uh, Orlando a handful of years ago, and I was doing a convention like this, large audience. We do Q&A. We're going to do Q&A this afternoon. And then during the Q&A, I was talking about atrial fibrillation, the fluttering of the heart. I get a phone call six months later. This woman calls me up. She said, hey, I heard you speaking at this convention. I heard you talk about atrial fibrillation. My husband has it. Can you help me? I didn't quite grasp what you were saying. I said, sure, here comes the questions. Question number one, what medications is your husband taking? Well, he's taking an atrial fibrillation medication. Many men get atrial fibrillation, the fluttering of the heart in their mid-50s. He's 54 at the time. I said, what else is he taking? He's taking a beta blocker. I said, a beta blocker? She said, yeah, he's taking a beta blocker. I said, you've lost your husband, haven't you? She said, I have. My husband has no energy anymore. He has no interest in his life. He has no interest in me. He's so tired, he doesn't want to do anything. Of course, he's on a beta blocker. It shuts down his energy. It shuts down his heart rate, puts him in a semi-comatose state. Very powerful medication. I said, is he taking anything else? She said, like what? I said, is he taking any anti-inflammatory type medications? Give me an example. Tylenol, leave, Advil. Yeah, he takes a leave. How long has he been taking a leave? five years. How often does he take it? He takes it sometimes twice a day. I said, I think that's your problem. Why do you say that? I said, because a leave or any of these anti-inflammatories leach out a valuable mineral called magnesium, and magnesium is the mineral relaxation. It's headaches, it's blood pressure, it's sleep, and it's atrial fibrillation. If you're deficient in magnesium, that heart does not know how to contract con properly, and that leads many times to atrial fibrillation. I've worked with many people over the years that have had this. She said, what should I do? I said, number one, get him off his leave now. Get him off it today. Don't mess with his medications. Work with his doctor. I want you to do the cod liver oil. The cod liver oil is an anti-inflammatory. Two tablespoons a day, here you go. Number two, I want you to have him do an Epsom salt bath. Epsom salts are the highest form of magnesium on the planet. Take two cups, put it in a bath, and I want you to soak in the bath, have him, your husband soak in the bath for 10 minutes twice a week. Then I want you to get some cacao nibs, real chocolate. You're going to have this at your break tomorrow real chocolate. I want you to mix that in his oatmeal. We started adding this and that, and the next thing you know, a year and a half later, he's off his atrial fib med, he's off his beta blocker med, and now he's atrial fib free. She's got her husband back by asking the better question. So when you start thinking about this over time, what should I do? This is what you do. The most powerful medication on the planet is food. The most powerful medication on the planet is what we put in our bodies. I love to talk about aging. Everybody's aging. When you hear anti-aging, it's not true. 
<laughs> everybody ages. So when you see anti-aging, it's not true. It's a bunch of hogwash. You want to think about that over time. We're all aging. But here's what I want everybody to know. If you looked at the green line, the green line is how you can age from a health standpoint. If your lifestyle's pretty good, you see a slow decline. I get this reminded of this all the time by my son, Matt. Hey, Dad, you just don't hit the golf ball as far anymore. Hey, Dad, you don't run as fast anymore. Dad, you can't jump a lick, blah, blah, blah. Matt, wait till you're almost 60. Wait to see what happens, right? So, but if your lifestyle's pretty good, it slowly declines. If your lifestyle's not so good, we all get this. At about age 40 to 45, we see a rapid decline. And that's called the cliff. And what I don't want anybody to do in here is have this thing called the gap. Man, you've had this a great career with AT&T, and then by the time you're 70, you have no health. Who cares? Who cares? I want to have that amazing health. I worked my butt off my whole life. I want to have that amazing lifestyle at the end. It's not about how long I'm going to live. It's the quality. So here's what I want. Here's an exercise for you right now. You have five seconds to do this exercise. Take out a pen, pencil, write it on your handout. How long are you going to live? Write it down, five seconds. Don't debate it. Don't think about it. Just write it down. Okay, it's over. I'm doing Q&A not too long ago, and we're, this comes out about aging, and the guy in set raises his hand and talks about it. I said, hey, would you mind sharing how long you're going to live with the audience? He says, no. I said, what did you write down? He said, 72. I said, how old are you? He said, 65. I go, whoa, we, we got to get busy here, don't we? I said, how long do you want to live? And he says, I want to live to 85. I said, what would it be necessary for you to do? Are you willing to take a couple of these steps? He says, I am. That's the key is not how long I'm going to live, but what do I want it to look like? Or where do I want it to look like? And sometimes we don't think about that. We're thinking about a portfolio, but we're not thinking about us, right? So I want us to understand a couple of things about aging. Number one, if you cut your hand, what happens to your hand in a couple of days? Amazing ability to heal the body. I'm more passionate about that than I've ever been in my entire life. You cut your hand, it has amazing ability. My mom, 82 years old, my mom's on no medications. When my mom was in her early 60s, she was on seven and told, told that she would be on these meds the rest of her life. 82, no meds. So the human body will heal itself if you put it in a better environment. So one of the cute stories I've shared lately is my father-in-law. I've known this guy 40 years. I love this guy to death. He's never asked me one question about fitness and health in 40 years, not once. In fact, he has no idea what I do for a living, has no clue. <laughs> He's lost two of his wives to cancer, goes up to northern Michigan up in Petoskey, and he meets this woman at a class reunion. She's lost her husband to cancer, and they start dating. He's got a new girlfriend. First time I meet her, she comes down. She, teaches, she takes yoga three times a week and is the choir director in, in Petoskey. She's super fit. She's got my book, and she's got it earmarked. She's asking me every question you can imagine over dinner. It's just incredible. Guess who now is interested in fitness and health? <laughs> My father-in-law. And now the cat is drinking cod liver oil and doing the spirulina corella on a regular basis. 40 years, he never had any interest, but now he's got this amazing woman in his life. And I got to tell you, he came to life. My wife and I talk about this all the time. He would not be around today, he's 83 years old, if she wasn't in his life, because he really didn't have a purpose. So number one, I have to tackle your beliefs. And when you think about beliefs themselves, it's the action, the result. My goal this afternoon, my goal to help with you guys is to help you get amazing results. I want you to have the best life you can possibly imagine and have that health and the vitality, whatever you want. And that's my goal here. So I'm going to share with you a couple myths. This is a couple big ones. Many people believe that a calorie equals a calorie. That's not true. Many people believe, this is my carbohydrate table, that carbohydrates make you fat. That's not true either. Many people believe that proteins make you leaner. Nope. Fats make you fat. Many people believe the best way to lose weight is more cardio. These are all myths. They're not true. So if I don't tackle these beliefs, it's very difficult for people to get the results because they will follow that. I'll ask you one. How many of you believe cod liver oil tastes bad? Raise your hand. And how many of you believe it tastes bad and you've never had it before? And what would that be called? That would be called a limiting belief. We've all had these limiting beliefs. How many of you ever had Jägermeister before? And how many of you believe that Jägermeister tastes good the first time you have it? <laughs> Nobody drinks Jägermeister for the taste, ever. 
You drink it at 3 a.m. with one purpose in mind. That's it, okay? So why would I bring cod liver oil? Because I want to have amazing results. And here's the benefit of cod liver oil. And you're all going to say the same thing. doesn't taste like anything. You're going to get it right on the way out before you have a glass of wine or a beer or whatever. The action you take is this, one to two tablespoons. The result is what I'm after. Number one, brain health. How many of you want to have a better brain health? Right here. How many want to have better heart health? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your future anti-inflammatory. That's what it is. It's a COX-2 inhibitor. It lowers inflammation. No more any of these anti-inflammatories. They're horrible for the body. That's it. And last but not least, how many of you like to have better sex hormones? We got a lot of people in here not telling the truth. So when you think about this over time, what does it do? It's the raw material that makes your sex hormones. So why wouldn't people want this, right? And that's the big four. How many of you heard of gluten intolerances 30 years ago? Nobody heard of it 30 years ago. Very, I mean, once in a while. Now it's like an epidemic. It's all the celebrities are... Think about this over time. The reason we have gluten intolerance is because we have weak digestion. Gluten is the protein of a grain that's hard to break down. So if you have weak digestion, you can't break down the gluten, hence gluten intolerances. What causes weak digestion? Dead foods. The more dead foods you eat, they have no enzymes. If I left these foods up here, the Doritos, the Pringles, is this really a cereal, Reese's Puffs? Seriously. So as I eat these foods, how about Velveeta cheese? Anybody had any Velveeta cheese in your lifetime? Man, I grew up in that stuff. I, I don't know. I live in a nature preserve. My wife says, and I'm a little nut job sometimes, and I take this white plate, and uh, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking the I can't believe it's butter and the Velveeta cheese, and I'm going to put it out in the nature preserve and see what the animals do to it. She said, you're really weird, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'm going to take this out there. So I put it out in the nature preserve, and I come back a month later, and I look at the I can't believe it's butter and Velveeta cheese, and the Velveeta cheese is completely separated. The, the yellow's on the side. And the I can't believe it's butter, this is July of last year, and not one bug or animal has touched either one. The bugs and the animals will not touch the, I can't believe it's butter, and the Velveeta cheese. This is the best example of a dead food I can share with you. If I came up here five years from now, there's not going to be any changes of these. I bit into this apple earlier. Why is the apple turning brown? Because it's a live food. So when we start eating more live foods, eating real foods, maybe you have sauerkraut, maybe you have kefir, maybe you have a probiotic, apple cider vinegar, a little... Water with lemon, water with lemon and limes, amazing for your digestion. That's the key to prove that strength of the digestion.